What's up guys? Just a guy in tech here. Apple has finally released the public beta of iPadOS 14 along with iOS 14 last week. And what this means is, you no longer need to have an access to a $99 developer account to access the latest OS 14 betas from Apple. And also, this comes just after two weeks since Apple showcased its latest software to developers at WWDC 2020. So, in today's video, I'll be going over all the top features of the iPadOS 14. Also guys, before you go ahead and install the public beta on your iPads, make sure to backup the data on your iPads. Remember that it's still a beta, so it'll be unstable and it'll have bugs. The official stable version of the iPadOS 14 is expected to come out in September or October. Also guys, the iPadOS 14 is compared with 11 different iPad models which are all displayed on the screen right now. So make sure to check if your iPad is compatible with the latest OS before you install the iPadOS 14 public beta. With that being said, is the iPadOS 14 a worthy upgrade to the original version of the iPadOS? Let's find that out by going over all the top features of the iPadOS 14. iPadOS 14 features a new compact UI design which was much needed for the iPad. Incoming FaceTime calls now appear as a notification banner on the top of the screen instead of taking up the whole screen as they did in the original version of the iPadOS. You can quickly tap to answer the call or just flick it away to dismiss. This feature also works with third party apps. Also, iPadOS 14 finally lets you use FaceTime and a few other apps as picture in picture window. The picture in picture window can be also resized. This is really helpful when you're watching a video and taking notes or FaceTiming with someone and browsing the web. Siri, the voice assistant, has also got a new compact interface. When Siri is activated in iPadOS 14, it appears at the bottom of the screen on the iPad instead of taking up the whole screen. The new interface does look pretty neat and I really like it as it doesn't disturb the whole screen. But you can't do anything with the screen when Siri is activated. I really wish Apple did let the user interact with the iPad screen when Siri is activated. Another new feature for Siri is sending audio messages. Previously, Siri couldn't do that, but now in iPad OS 14, you can finally send audio messages through Siri. Search bar on the iPad is one of the best features of iPad OS 14. The new compact UI design lets you search anywhere without having to leave the app you are in. To access the redesigned search bar, simply swipe down or by hitting the command space on an external keyboard. Apple has also rebuilt the whole search algorithm and now it is much quicker. You can search practically anything like apps, documents, files, contacts, and even web searches. The web searches are more refined now and the suggestions keep popping up with every letter you type. Some of the apps like files, notes, photos, calendars, Apple Music have been optimized with sidebar menus and this definitely does make everything look neat. The navigation within the app is consolidated and put on the left hand side making the navigation within the app much easier and the app takes better advantage of the screen size. I really wish Apple had introduced the sidebar design with the original version of the iPadOS. Few of the apps now feature streamlined toolbars and new pull down menus too. The best and the flagship features for the iPadOS 14 is for the Apple Pencil. So before iPadOS 14, if you're drawing something on your iPad or taking notes and you suddenly had to search for something on the iPad or browse the web, you had to put down the Apple Pencil and use the keyboard to provide a particular input. But now you don't need to do that because in iPadOS 14, the Apple Pencil supports a new feature called Scribble. So Scribble basically lets you write text into any text field using your Apple Pencil and that handwritten text automatically converts into plain text. Using Scribble is very easy. All you have to do is just write in a particular text field you're looking at with the Apple Pencil and once you start writing, it isn't necessary that you have to write within the box. You can basically write anywhere on the screen. The conversion from handwritten text to plain text isn't instant. There's a very very small delay, about a second or so. Now if you want to select words to replace or edit, you can just circle them and to erase something all you have to do is just scratch that particular word. Scratching out a word to raise it certainly does remind me of my school days. Apple Pencil also has a new shape recognition feature which basically auto-corrects your shapes and makes them geometrically perfect in Apple Notes. This feature is also present in the Procreate app which is a paid app on the Apple Store so it's finally good to have it on the Notes app which is free. You can also select your handwritten text in Apple Notes and paste it as a plain text anywhere you want. So now you can finally share 
bad handwritten notes as plain text to your friends. Oh, also, data detection now works with handwritten text on iPadOS 14. So basically what this means is, data detector automatically recognizes handwritten phone numbers, addresses, dates and websites and lets the user take actions like tapping on the number to make a phone call or tapping on the handwritten website link directly takes you to the particular website and it can also show you the location of a particular handwritten address in maps. The widgets on iPadOS 14 have been redesigned and can be found on the left hand side of the home screen. Unfortunately, you can't move around the widgets to any part of the screen like you can do in iOS 14. To add widgets or to edit widgets, just long press on the screen and click on the plus button on the top left corner. You can select various different native Apple app widgets and you can also select the size of the widget. You basically have three different sizing options to choose from. In iPadOS 14, you can also create a smart stack of widgets which lets you have different widgets in one single stack and you can access the different app widgets within the stack by just swiping down or swiping up on the stack. According to Apple, the smart stack uses on-device intelligence to show you the right widgets based on time, location and activity. Messages in iPadOS 14 have also been updated with new features. You can now pin conversations to the top of your message list. You can also use mentions using the at the rate character so that the user at the other end knows that he or she is mentioned in that particular message. And inline replies are now supported in group messages. Apple Memojis also have been updated with new hairstyles, headwear, face coverings like a face mask. So overall your conversations are now going to be more fun and lively. Maps have also been updated in iPadOS 14 with new cycling directions and curated guides. Guides provide a list of interesting places to visit around you and let you discover new restaurants and popular attractions. According to Apple, the cycling directions take into account the elevation, how busy the street is and also if there are any stairs along the route. So those were all the main features in iPadOS 14. Now let's go over some of the features that I had hoped for in iPadOS 14. For someone who uses his iPad a lot, I really wished for a better external monitor support but that didn't happen. Right now you can only mirror the display of your iPad onto the monitor but you cannot use it as a separate or an extended screen. If someone does use their iPad as the main powerhouse, then a better external monitor support would have helped them so much. The second feature that I had hoped for were floating windows for better multitasking features. My idea was if we could have two apps in split screen view and two or three small floating windows of other applications which would give you more multitasking options. Last but not the least, I really hoped this year would be the year when we could finally use the iPad like your laptop. And this means iPad supporting Xcode for developers or Final Cut Pro X for creators. But I guess we still have to wait for pro level applications to be supported on the iPad. iPadOS 14 certainly has added tons of new amazing features to the iPad and also makes you love your Apple Pencil more. It makes your whole experience with the iPad more productive and makes you hope for more amazing features to come to your iPad in the near future. Maybe a year or two down the lane your iPad will be your laptop, thanks to the iPad OS. So that's it guys, those are the top features of the iPad OS 14 and the iPad OS 14 is definitely a worthy upgrade compared to the original version of the iPad OS. Do let me know down in the comments what was your favorite feature of the iPad OS 14. Also guys, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. All the links related to this video will be down in the description. Most importantly, thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, take care and stay safe. Peace.